Hi everybody. So to those that have watched some of my videos, you probably know I have this Ranger with a go fast camper. Um, but before I had that long story short, hopefully I used to have a 2004, 2004 F-150 and it rusted out on me and that's probably my own fault. I also had at the time an old Dodge Neon so I would kind of drive around town, do most of my commuting with the Neon, saving miles on the truck, but I would drive the truck when the weather was nasty, you know, during the winter uh, and I didn't wash underneath the truck enough. My own fault. Um, but for a while there I was just so busy with work I really couldn't justify what I found having two vehicles, even though like it was a really old neon, it's just, it was a lot to kind of maintain two vehicles. So for a while, what I did is I just had a Volvo C30, like that small two door hatchback. And the surprising thing with those is they can tow 2000 pounds. So for about five years, I had this mini camper, which is about eight feet long, just under five feet wide, and four and a half feet tall inside. And it worked great. It, it's made out of aluminum, so it's lightweight. So even with the add-ons, it's probably only like, I'm sure it's well under 900 pounds. So my Volvo can tow 2000 pounds. I did pay for the option. Um, it does have a trailer brake. So with the, I got the wireless controller. So. Worked fine with the Volvo, no accidents, no nothing. But eventually, you know, once I had more time for camping, I'm like, all right, let's get the Ranger and the Go Fast Camper. But I don't want to give this up. It's still great for Home Depot runs. Um, I did pay for the barn doors on the back. It, the default comes with a ramp, but I had gotten kind of these ready to open. So I do like the barn doors. Easier to load plywood in without the ramp on the floor getting in the way. Um, I'm in the middle of a project, which I'll get into shortly, but yeah, it's been great. So um, I did pay for this underfloor storage. Um, and my idea is I'm gonna put a diesel heater on the driver's side and then it gives me room over here. I'm gonna drill a hole through, through this so I can route the 60 millimeter ducting, the two and three eighths ducting. It'll just have a little vent sticking out here the walls and everything are insulated, so that, sh I mean, it's going to be a little sauna in there. I'll probably have to open windows so I don't get too hot. Um, this was 2018, so one of the things is it was kind of before lithiums were affordable. Uh, things have really changed since then. So the RV box that it came with, um, this circuit here, when you plug it in, is what converts it to 12 volt power. And the, and the original wasn't, it didn't have a charging profile for lithium. So with the electrical I've done, I can link uh, out of office camping's video on my truck. So I have a similar RV panel. So I, I don't need that. I don't need this um, in my truck because I have the Victron inverter charger. So I actually stole the one from my truck, put it in here. And now when I plug into shore power, uh, through this um, It'll charge up my battery that way. I've added this hundred watt panel. I Didn't want to put a hole through the roof. It's a small camper and If I went through the roof, I kind of felt it was kind of close to this light and I wasn't sure where the wires were and I didn't want to drill through it. So I just went through the side wall here um, This did drip a little I, I can clean that up with a knife and elbow grease with some, uh, but it, it comes off. It's polyurethane, uh, so that'll come off nicely. I can clean that up. This is an SAE connection for portable solar, and that's the gang entry for the 100 watt solar panel. And my plan is I'm gonna move the battery, the lithium battery to, and the stuff, the distribution bar, the, the solar charge controller, the MPPT, all that's gonna go on the shelf here. Um, so a single 100 amp hour lithium battery will run that diesel heater just fine. Um, and the reason that I'm moving stuff inside is because, again, this was 2018 when I got this. And the way it was wired, 
the battery, the lead acid battery goes here where I have this fuel tank. The wire for it, I'm not even sure if it's 10 gauge. It might be, um, but 10 gauge for a run that long to charge a 100 amp hour lithium battery, you're just asking for a fire. Um, but the way the wire was routed, um, let me get down below the, the camper here. So this frame piece here, let me get it closer. This frame here, they routed the wire through that. So I don't want to route, I'd have to route like, probably like a one or two gauge wire. And I don't want to, it's a small, I don't know, it's probably like two by three, two by four inches aluminum box frame. I don't want to ruin the integrity of it. So that's why I'm going to put the lithium battery inside. You don't need to vent lithium and lithium actually likes being the same temperature we are. So like they're happiest at like, I don't know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Like, uh, what is that? Like close enough to 20 degrees Celsius. That's where lithium batteries like to be. So I'm going to use this as a winter camper. It won't like being outside in this battery box anyway. So the idea is see that fuel tank. That's going to go in the battery box. I'm going to um, run a pipe between the battery box to the underfloor box. And that's how I'll get the fuel into the heater. I will have carbon monoxide detection and stuff like that. But, um, and then I'm going to vent out the back of the box for the air and exhaust intake for the diesel heater. So that's kind of the rough plan. I do have more on the electrical stuff later. Um, I mean, I can give you the brief update now on it. So yeah, let's go take a look there. In my basement. This is what I've built to kind of contain the battery and the other stuff. So let me get that out of the way so I can kind of show you more what's going to go on. But the main thing I wanted to show with it all set up here, um, there's not enough room for me to put this on the ceiling. Uh, and I wouldn't be able to see the lights. I think I'll be able to see the lights. I'll show you the lights in a sec. I'm gonna put the solar charge controller up on the roof here like that. Um, but yeah, let me give you a little overview of the power setup. All right, so I got stuff out of the way. Um, it's such a short run uh, looking online. I'm just using four gauge wire and there's no plan with the single battery. I'm not planning on running an inverter. Um, if somebody wants to upgrade this later, I mean, it'd be very easy for them to buy like one gauge is probably as most, I wouldn't go too big. If you go too big, sometimes that causes different problems. Um, but with this, I do recommend these Lynx distribution bus bars, uh, move that out of the way right now. It's set to off, but with the fuse holders and like these thick cop tin copper bars, um, you know, it's, it's similar money. I would just spend the 200 bucks for the Lynx bar. And with Explorist Life, you can see the wire, like right here, I made this. And it goes, like there's a negative line to here and there's a line there. And in between, which you can't see, there's a converter 12 volt to USB power. Um, and going into that, um, it makes the LED work. So I have all the fuses in place. I'm gonna put the cover on and now I've I've actually wired the switch directly to the end of the Lynx bus bar, which is nice. And we'll see, yeah, we got a green LED. So all the fuses are working. Um, I also have, let me turn this off first. I have a cover for the 150 amp fuse that I put in place. So nothing can zap me, which is nice. I'll take the cover off. Just gonna remove one of the, one of these fuses. So now I only have three fuses, not four. Um, we'll put the cover back in place. And turn it back on. And we see, give it a sec. Yep, and now it says, hey, your fuse is blown in the rightmost position and the center light will be red too. So that's the cool thing with the Lynx uh, bus bar. Uh, if you explore us life, I can link it in the description on how to make that cable. Um, I also went with a smart shunt uh, instead of the battery monitor. It was just cheaper and I use my phone all the time anyway. 
Uh, and with the mini camper being small, I don't want to have to crawl on the side just to see how much battery life I have. Um, the range is actually good enough where I'm sitting in the living room. I'll be able to like remotely check my phone, how the battery is doing. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the electrical setup. I'll have to add like a strap to hold the battery in place, all that fun stuff. But that is the rough plan. Um, and then I can get all this electrical garbage that I've had out for the last month or so. Been procrastinating. I can get that put away and do some other projects. I want to do other projects. So my goal is to get this done and I'm going to shoot some videos as I do it. And, uh, yeah, you guys can, uh, give me feedback if you see I'm doing anything really dumb, but, uh, I've done the wiring on the truck and that's held up fine. So hopefully this will be easier and a fun project that I get to show you guys this time. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, love to see your comments. So thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.